All right, here we go. One of my favorite repeat guests. TK Kirkland is back in the building. Yo, it's always a pleasure. Um, the great Vlad. The, you know, that's what I call him, the great Vlad. Thank you. The great TK. Yes, sir. The man that's done everything that's been everywhere. That's absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and, and and to the people who play with me on that, if you live to be 60 years old, you could accomplish that too. Okay. Is that how old you are now? Yeah, I'm 60. Wow. I know, right? Wow. 60 years old. 60. Swim Man. 50 laps. I swim 100 laps in the pool and once a week. And I work out um, every day, every other day. Huh. So that's my that's my workout. But it's peace of mind. Like the pandemic has been amazing for me because I got to enjoy what I worked so hard for over the years because I'm on a plane every other day. So yeah. this is the first time ever in my life I was ever in one spot, maybe two or three months, ever. Yeah. And I'll tell you, you know, because we were talking about, you know, how I lost 15 pounds recently as yes. well by just, you know, monitoring what I eat and everything else yes. like that. For me, the big motiv motivating factor was they found a connection between people dying from COVID and obesity. I believe it. Yeah. But, you know, I try to stress that anyway, man. We always just talk about that. that people got to take care of their health before a pandemic, before any type of disease. You have to do it before. What, what's the word? Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Mm -hmm. That's what you got to do. You got to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Because I love life too much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I love it too. And I know two people that have died from COVID personally. There yeah. was Fred the Godson, who was yeah. very obese. Yeah. Very obese. And another guy named Frank Collada. He was a much older guy. He was an ex-mobster from Vegas, which is where, where you live now. Yes. Um. And he had very serious breathing problems. He had like a like a breathing mask during our interview. Okay. Already. And he you know, died? He, a, he died recently from COVID, yeah. Wow. So he passed away since the interview to now. Yeah. yeah. Man. Yeah, we did his last interview. We did his last interview. Frank Collado was his gangster, and the, the movie Casino was partly based on his life. He was one of the characters. He was Joe Pesci's right-hand man okay. in real life. Right. Is this the one that had sex with mom? No. Oh, no. okay. With, with Marilyn Monroe, no. You're talking about uh, Johnny Russo. Okay, okay. I was just yeah. wanted to make it sure. Right. And, you know, this actually brings us into a nice transition point. Yes. Johnny Russo is the only person I've ever interviewed that really is fighting for you for the title of doing the most things I heard, in life. <laughs> I heard. I heard. Now, you know, and, and it's, it's great. And, and since we talk about doing the most things... Recently, there was a, um, a special that came out on BET called The Rough Rider Chronicles. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? I have not. Okay, you got to watch the Rough, uh, the Rough Rider Chronicles. So what I want to say to WAP and Dean from the Rough Rider Chronicles to the Cash Money Millionaires to the NWA movie, you got to start giving the comedian T.K. Kirkland his props. The one that was destroying... 15,000 seaters, 18,000 seaters, not just on one tour now. Like the Rough Rider Tour, the Cash Money Millionaires, the Hard Knock, Hard Knock Light Tour with Jay-Z, N.W.A., T.K. Kirkland was the host. And for anybody who see this interview, make sure you give me a 100 and make sure you reach out to all the, all the um, um, groups that we talked about. I hosted every last tour mm. i'm proud of myself there you go yes sir yes Th sir there you go there you go <laughs> well before we get started into everything else uh i just want to do a rest in peace to chadwick boseman yes uh aka the black panther yes who died from colon cancer at 43 years old. yes yes Oof. that 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 touched me um i wasn't a great fan of black panther because I'm not a Marvel guy, but my kids love the Marvel movies. And they always informed me on what happened in the books. And this happened, like my son, Ares, my daughter, Trinity. They are just Marvel uh, icons. I'm just don't have the knowledge on the Marvel stuff. So I supported Black Panther, saw what it had accomplished. And I just thought the handshake and doing this 
was the fly shit and where I thought maybe that was just gonna be somebody doing that in the hood. Then he just hand out, bam! But I didn't see it happen. I think I might have to when I go on stage, whoever I do that with the host, we can do that and then whoa, you know, see what see what I could um make that into something. I mean, yeah, I mean, besides Black Panther, uh Chadwick also did uh he played uh Jackie Robinson. James he Brown played James Brown. Yes. Uh and, and those roles were cool. You know, yes, he, yes. he he held his own in those role, you know, in those yes. roles. But when he did Black Panther and he played T'Challa, yes. that just took him over the top. And that was time. that was such an iconic movie. Like, for example, that was the first like foreign movie that was played in Saudi Arabia in like 20 years. Yes. And not just that, it was just, it was truly a movement. I had never seen people talk about doing something like that, believe it or not, probably since 1984, 85, when um, Coming to America was coming out, the original one with Eddie Murphy. Mm, right. Because it brought such a, a focus on Africa. Yes. Yes. In a po- in a positive sense. In a not positive like, sense. You know, in a in an advanced Africa, in yes. a prosperous yes. Africa. Yeah. You was, know, I, and like like I, you know, and believe just, it or not, I just didn't want to make sure I was a fool. I asked Alexa what was titanium and she explained to me how it was a, a fictional metal. And I just making sure that um I was knowledgeable on that on, on that particular uh information in the movie. Right, it's not actually ti- titanium. Is a real metal. Vibranium. Okay. What, vibranium. What's it called? Vibranium. Vibranium. Thank you. Vibranium. Thank you, sir. So I was yeah. confused. I I asked Alexa for it. You know, because as soon as I heard it on the movie, you know, that's my side bitch, Alexa and Siri. I be having them hoes argue all the time in the house, but that's another story. Well, speaking of Africa, I recently had Akon on my yes. show, and his interview, you know, kicked up a lot of dust. Yes. And in the interview, he said a few interesting things. I mean, one of the things he said was that he's been extremely successful in going back to Africa and starting businesses over there. Yes. And that kind of led into a bigger discussion. For example, I had Jamel Hill on recently, and we talked about how, you know, for example, me as an immigrant, my family, we were treated very well in, in what used to be Russia. So we moved our whole family to America to find a better place. Yes. More opportunities, you know, a better place for my, you know, for my parents, you know, son to grow up in. Yeah. And and I had a whole conversation with her with everything that's going on in America and the historical black bad treatment of black people in America. You rarely see black people going, moving back to Africa. Yeah. Even though these countries, like, for example, like I just interviewed this, uh, this artist from Ghana named uh, Socrates, Ghana had the year of return that basically wanted black people from around the world to come. And it was like a big event and everything else like that. Yeah. Do you actually see a lot of people who who were former Americans, expatriates, actually come back and live in Ghana? Yeah, there's a whole lot of people. And especially in these times, it's been um, uh, a bit more compared to way back. I think a lot of people are realizing that you need to come back home. And... Um, Yes. So people just had a perception from way back. I think Africa was, as you said, people just thought it was a whole country and people had perception of, you know, when you get to the airport, you're going to see some giraffes, you know, pass by the plane or you're going to see some lions walking somewhere, you know, and the perception changed over, over time. And people got to realize this is one of the most beautiful places you could ever go. And that made black people have a sense of pride and feeling like we have, we have a home to go to. From your point of view, why don't more American black people move back to Africa? I think it has a lot to do with um, your finances. You got to have money. No matter how this, how you slice this, it all comes down to the dollar. And if you ain't got the plane ticket to fly there, if you ain't got a place to move to or where to go, you're done. And it seems that way with um, white America, but when you really narrow it down, they have more money compared to most of all the Afro, I mean, uh, African Americans have. So I think that's the bottom line. They can't. Some people can't move out of their own neighborhood, and it's a bad neighborhood, and it's gang infested. So it all comes down to money. I think about going to Africa 
to live, right? It crossed my mind because I see how beautiful it truly is over there. And what has happened, the system has created such a bad image of Africa over the years as we was growing up, we think it's really bad. Until you go, people go there and they show the homes. They show how successful people are. And they show you how well that you treat it and how it's been this um this lie, this uh, this 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 lie that Africa is in this bubble that you gotta have all these shots before you go to Africa to make it seem like it's disease infested. So it's it has a lot to do with um information and what's projected into your life as you're growing up. Cause these are things I used to think as well. Um, maybe, maybe into the last 20, 30 years. And I really tried to start going over there, but with the kind of schedule I have is just, and like, I really, like I said, going back to the pandemic, I truly appreciate not doing nothing. Yeah. And this is what me and Jamel uh, Hill talked about how America probably has the best marketing of any country in the world. Yes. The land of opportunity. Yep. Like someone came up with that one day. You got to got it. That wasn't just that wasn't just like, you know, yes, yes. popped up one right. day. Like someone said, "Oh, we're going to call America the land of opportunity." Yes. Who doesn't like opportunities? I agree. Everyone everyone loves opportunities. I agree. You don't have opportunities, you know, in the country where, where you're living in? Come on over to America. Yes. And you could be a millionaire as an immigrant. Yes. And there's so many levels to here, right? You got people come here who know how to take advantage of the system. You know, you got people here who could get on welfare, we uh, um, pimp the system. You got people that have come here, the government pays you to come to school. A lot of people don't know that um, Putin went to Princeton. Mm. The, Ru- the, the Russian president, he went to Princeton University. Google it. About to Google it. Nope, not true. It's not true? Not then true. I've been giving out the wrong information. My apologies. <laughs> he went to, let's see. Uh, yeah, he went to St. Petersburg State University. In America? No, in, in, in Russia. In Russia, okay. Okay, good yeah, to and know. Then, and, then, and then he went to St. Petersburg Mining Institute for a PhD. Okay, per- thank you, sir. That information came to me years ago, and I'm glad I haven't said it too much out there in the universe, because normally <laughs> I don't say nothing. Unless I truly know. Yeah, yeah, he didn't go to Princeton. Okay, but good. you know, I mean, that's not far fetched for someone of his stature to go to right. Princeton. Right. No. Because a lot of people do come from other countries to get the education from America and then go back at the universities. Yeah, yeah, no, a lot of people, a lot of the the main leaders go overseas and get their education. Yeah, uh, but yeah, he's not, you know, one of them, unfortunately. But yeah, uh, so. As we were saying, the land of opportunity. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people think that they're going to go to Africa and just be broke. This you, is why people, you know, yes. people don't go there. Right. Africa is not marketed in the same way the United States I is. I totally in agree. Fact, in fact, and even Jamel Hill even, even like made a mistake as we were talking. She referred to Africa as a country. Accidentally. And she's a very smart, educated woman person yes and yet we all kind of make this mistake that we don't break down the you know the 50 or 60 or so countries that africa consists of exactly it's a continent correct it's a continent it's a continent yeah people don't talk about ghana you know senegal nigeria you know gambia all these places uh and let, let me tell you man i interviewed you know the most successful artist out of ghana he's doing well his yes. videos are getting like 100 million views. Like wow. he's got a strong fan base. He, he's got money. Yes. He tours around the world. Uh, and he just talked about how great it was to really just be in a country where everyone looks like you. Yeah. Uh, the, the government all looks like you. Right. The store, you know, business owners all look like you. The police all look like you. I know that feeling. When I was on tour with NWA and we went to Atlanta. And coming up the airport in Atlanta from the baggage handlers to the cops to almost every cab driver to the hotel was African-American. Unreal. So I, I, and when you said that, that's what took me back to that because I remember that. 
You know what? Yeah. I don't think it's too late for me to go. It's something that I would really think about because if you had, I, you got to go over there and have something going, though. You just can't go over there and wing it because everything in life takes planning and strategy. Mm -hmm. You just can't yeah. go over there and say, hey, I'm just going to take a risk and go. Nah, nah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, uh, in fact, a lot of people, you know, what uh, Socrates told me was a lot of, uh, well, a lot of black Americans go and retire in Ghana. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, yeah. it's a, it's something like, I, but I know that Ludacris just moved over there. Ludacris moved to Ludacris to moved over to um to Africa. He go he bought a house there. Okay, yeah, he bought a house there. I saw his um people about a month month two months ago in Beverly Hills. We was all at the W. You are right. He has dual citizenship now. Yes, uh, he has a second home in Gabon. Yes. Yeah. Nice. At least I got something right. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I've, yep. known, I've known him very for a long time, Ludacris. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, listen, if you have money, you can live in a lot of different places. You sure can. You yeah, sure can. You know, I got I got my place in L.A. I got my place in New York. Yes. Uh, I'm, look, I'm looking at Atlanta now. Oh, is that right? Place. Yeah, you got to go down yeah. to Atlanta. Vlad, yeah. you got to. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking. As soon as, as, soon as I can safely fly, I'm going to go check out Right, right, right. So I wanted to explain to people about the world. Right. When you get information in bits and pieces or you hear something a week later or two weeks later, the information is never going to be right. And what I want to explain to people when it comes to information, please check yourself first and say to yourself, let me take the emotion out first before I reply and before I do my due diligence because you see so many different things going on and it goes to show you people react first before they think about what's going on and anything, just like with um, dealing with the election, right? Now, I'll post on Facebook and Instagram, please vote. And I get some of the most asinine, ignorant, replies that I've ever heard, ever read in my life. And what I want to understand to people is whoever you want to vote for, think about it. Now, I am no fan of none of the candidates. I'm not a fan of Trump. I'm not a fan of Biden. I'm not a fan of Ms. Harris. But I am against a, lead, a leader who lies like Donald Trump. I am against that. I am against all the things the man has done to this country and has affected people all the way down to the people from Mexico who he, they took their kids. And when the families go get their paperwork together and nobody's talking about this, they can't find their children. Their kids are gone, like disappeared. Like you can't find your child. So I want, to, I want to explain to people on, on this platform why I want them to vote. And I want you to vote because whether you're a fan of Trump or Biden and Harris, let me explain to, you, to the people who don't want Trump in there. Biden and Harris is the bridge to the presidency who's going to really change it. See, Biden and Harris is what I consider the substitute teacher, the teacher that's going to come in and milk this for a minute until we get the right candidate to put in office. Because what's the only thing's wrong with Biden and Harris is that their past has truly come back to bite them on the ass. So people want to hold them accountable for what they've done, but not hold Trump accountable for the things that he's doing. And we have to learn to separate and take away the emotion because we understand what Trump is doing. And anybody that lies like that on a regular basis, you can't do business with. And I'm a, I'm, I, I, I understand when you are um, an opportunist, and I don't mind Trump taking his off the top, do you? But when you say fuck everybody, when you say fuck everybody, then that's the problem that I have. And that you're willing to lie and destroy people's lives just to be, get a second term. That's to me, that's over. So I want people to please don't use excuses, go out and vote. But let's hold Biden and Harris 
accountable for doing something. We, they gotta, there's no black agenda. It never has been. So I'm tired of hearing Breonna um, um, Taylor, George Floyd, and so on and so on, and mentioning their names in all your quote unquote press conferences to lure the Afro-American vote. Then once you get us to vote, you don't think about us anymore. That has to stop. We really need someone to make sure that things get done. Because I'm like I said, I'm 60. I've said people have been marching my whole fucking life. Marching doesn't change anything. We need laws. And we need opportunities in the community to give people a chance. And I, I just wanted to say that while I was on your show because the young men who are listening to this who are gonna, who are gonna say, oh fuck that, I ain't gonna vote. You you's a fool. You people have your ancestors, your aunts, your uncles, your grandmothers, your grandfathers died to give us a vote because people don't th- remember it was we couldn't vote. That's not too long ago. We couldn't vote. People people died over this, like died, and people just don't get it. So you have to. If you don't do it for yourself, do it for the people that fought to get us to have this opportunity. Well, I'll say this. I've registered to vote. Yes. I haven't posted my registration on my social media. Yes, sir. Just to, just to show people that I'm serious. Yes. And I think this is what people need to realize as we go towards the election in yes. November. If you look at what happened last time. Yes. I remember I talked to, to a friend of mine who works with the mayor of D.C., you know, political political insider. Yes, sir. And I and at that point, everyone thought Hillary Clinton was going to win. She yep. was up in the polls. Even Trump thought she was going to win. Right. And I sat down with him. I said, "Do you think that Trump has a chance of winning?" And he said, "Yes." And he explained why. He said, "And this is why, because a Trump supporter is going to go to the polls." And he's going to bring his friends <laughs> and he's going to bring his relatives. They're yeah. all going to get in the pickup truck and they're all going to go there and they're all going to vote. Everyone who's a Hillary supporter, they may or may not vote. Mm. It's up in the air. And ultimately, that's what happened. I agree. A lot of people did not vote for Hillary. They just didn't go, vote at all. The lowing, the voting numbers that year were at record low. Yes, it was. So as we go into 2020, if you think, well... I don't support Trump, so I'm not going to vote for him. I'm just not going to vote at all. His supporters aren't thinking that. Yep. His supporters are running to the polls. This is why Trump is trying to shut down the post office and everything else like that. Because he knows that the Democrats are all going to try to mail in their votes, whereas his supporters are going to be right there. Yes. There is so much more excitement, so much more loyalty in a Trump supporter than anyone else. Right. You have to hold that into account. I agree. So if you want Trump out of office... The only way you're going to do it is by going to the polls and voting. You got to vote. And now it's down to evil and good. See? Mm-hmm. It's come down to evil and good because Donald Trump is willing to have people killed for him to get back in the election. He doesn't care who dies. He, he doesn't care. His own co-worker, Herman Cain, who died from going to his rally yes. and not wearing a mask yes. and bragging about not wearing a mask yes. is still tweeting after his death yes. about how COVID is not as serious as people make it out to be, even though he died. This is a zombie tweeting in favor of Trump after he was killed by Trump's policies. Isn't that something? And Trump has not even mentioned he was a good man. Oh, he he put a little something out there, but he you know, he didn't take any responsibility yeah, for it. Yeah, he ain't taking. He didn't any, say yeah. we should we should start wearing masks now because right. you know this guy here died. Yes, yes. So people got to understand. That, listen, everybody that's watching Vlad, listen. You guys comment on some of the most craziest things in the world. This right here is really really serious, and take it seriously. Do not put no elementary comment. Don't say nothing ignorant under the comments about uh, I'm not voting, fuck this, fuck that. Because if you say that, it shows the 
your, your mindset and the ability, the inability to comprehend grown man conversation. So if you can't comprehend what we're talking about, if this is uh, over your head, then you shouldn't even be watching this episode. Right. In all honesty, for the first time in my lifetime living in America, yes, since I was four years old, this is the first time I've seen a president overlook a race war. Oh man, yes, sir. That's what's ha- that's what's happening at these protests. Yes, it's, it's sir. A race, it's, it's it's a full blown race war. It's full blown. It's full blown, and you and you got to be careful what's going on here. So, kids with rifles shooting people in the street dead, and then the president. Not even commenting on it. Yep. That's scary. Yeah. It's bigger than what we think. And ladies and gentlemen, he's willing to die. He's willing to make sure you will die for him to get back in order. He does not care. Nope. He does not care. Nope. Nope. What did you think about Herschel Walker co-signing? Ooh, that hurt me. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't even read the shit. It hurt me so bad, Vlad. I couldn't just because here's the thing about politics with Trump for some reason. We all know you you seem like you sometimes you feel like you are does he got a are we in the matrix and he did something to somebody because when people say I'm a Trump supporter, your head go to the side a little bit. Like what did he do to you? Like how did he get in your house and confuse you? Because it makes people who Think logically that something could be wrong with you. Like, is something wrong with me? Like, do people see this? This man has had the ability to make people forget about morals, about doing the right thing, and how your children look at you. He he has that ability to make you forget that you are supposed to do something right. Think about the Republicans and when the impeachment. All these people knew that this man was wrong, but nope, didn't care. So this is it's not coming down to right and wrong. You absolutely right, Vlad. If the people don't get out and vote, we are going to lose because his people are going. Yeah. They will be there. Yeah. Just to prove a point. And I don't want, you know what? I, 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 don't, I don't get into competition, but if we lose this one, I'm going to be hurt. This is like, a, this is like a, the championship of the world to me. Yeah, facts. 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 Well, let's switch gears for a second. Yes, sir. R. Kelly recently got stabbed in prison. Oh, he was stabbed and wasn't beat up? He wasn't beat up? Well, he was beat up and apparently stabbed like with a pen. Wow. Just think, a couple years ago, he was touring the world. He was making royalties off his records. Yes. Beautiful women were throwing themselves yes, at him. Yes, they were. Yes. Uh, you know, he, he was wealthy. He yes. was living in big homes and had yes. women in, 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 in Trump Tower and all types of other places. Yes. And now he's sitting in a cell getting beat up and stabbed with a pen. Here's the thing about men like him, Bur- um, 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 Bill Cosby. What's the other white man that just got locked up? Weinstein. Wein- Weinstein. What men fail to realize, and then um, the sex porn star just got Ron Jeremy. Rob, man, this this shit makes facing me mad. facing two hundred and fifty years. Two hundred and fifty years. They said so many women came up front to talk about it. So let me explain to the young men who are gonna listen to this one day. Pussy should not be so important to you that you are willing to take it. Pussy should not put you in a position to choose life in prison and freedom on the street. This is the reason why they have these sites that you can pay a girl for some ass. This is the reason why they have these sites that you can Twenty fucking dollars, thirty dollars, to, even to the men who are extremely wealthy, you can have some of the hottest um, call girls in the world that you could pay them two, three thousand dollars. They come and do exactly 
what you want them to do, and then they leave. No prison time, nobody coming to court 20 years later to uh, the prosecutors are bringing in, and I don't get it. It's one of the um, saddest things in the world to hear when I hear it, how what, what pussy has done to destroy some of the most powerful men in the world. Even I was telling somebody the other day, the Maroonist dude from CBS. Is that, am I pronouncing his last name right? Monez? Munez? Uh, what's his, uh, for he CBS? was, he was a chairman and he lost his job too. His wife was a girl of Chinese lady on oh, the view. Moon. Yeah. Uh, Leslie Roy Moonves. How you yeah. pronounce it? I, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but it's Moonves. Yeah. Moonves. Okay. Yeah. Now, you know, now he got busted with sexual harassment. He was going to go to court. You know, he lost his job. Yeah. So his, um, package was 200 and 70 mil. Whew. And they didn't give it to him. Mm. Now, when his business came out, which is hilarious, this motherfucker had a woman on the payroll that her job was just to come in the office and suck his dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be the king. I swear that she was on payroll to come in the office to suck his motherfucking dick. I could not believe that. Again, now, I could believe it, but when you lose 270 mil over some ass, mm -hmm. Vlad, over 270 million, over some, once you get a nut, you, ain't, you may not even like a bitch no more. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it 100. Yeah, facts. Man, yo, I, I don't, I, you know what? I think I'm going to start a, um, a show on YouTube called, um, um, I got to, I got, who, I might have to call it who raised you because we got to teach men how to control their emotions over females. Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah. This, another one. This motherfucker. This motherfucker. Like, come on, guys. You touching women inappropriate? Even if that's something that you was doing. Once Cosby and all the motherfuckers started going to jail, I wouldn't even speak to a bitch. Knowing that something can fuck up my livelihood. I mean, yeah. They made a whole documentary uh, about Russell Simmons called yes. uh, on, the, on the Record. I watched it on HBO. Oh, so they talked. did put it out. They put it out. It's just not very popular. Okay. And, and quite honestly, I saw the documentary and it's really just a lot of hearsay. Oh, he did, you know, he did okay, this to me okay. 20, 25 years ago. Another one. Oh, yeah, he did something similar. But no, you know, but there was no uh, police report. There yes. was no charges. Yes. There was whatever. But let me tell you something. Uh, Russell Simmons, he sold all his property. Yes, he, he did. He sold his, his West Hollywood home, which yes. is beautiful. I, I've, I've been there. Yes. Uh, he, he sold some, you know, some big spot he had in New York. Yes. He, he went out to Fiji, bought himself a compound. Wow. Not a house, a compound. Man. He went and bought himself a compound in Fiji. And he's saying, man, I'm just going to wait it out here. Me and my hundreds of millions of dollars is just going to chill right here. That's right, smart man. Because you're not getting me, because Fiji doesn't have an extradition policy. I smart know. man. Not to say he's guilty. Right. Because let me tell you, I talked to him and he said he took like, like 10 lie detector tests. Yes. And he passed all of them. Yes. You know, but- at the end of the day, he sees how these things unravel and how you get some witnesses. And next thing you know, you're doing 25 years. Yes. This is a, I mean, how old is Russell? He's in his 60s, right? Yeah, he got to be about 60 something. Yeah. 60 something. Ron Jeremy, I just looked it up, is 67 years old. Man. Man, let me tell you something. You catch, you, when you look like Ron Jeremy. Yes. And you're in prison. Yeah. And you're in jail awaiting your trial. You yes. catch COVID. That's it. You're probably going to die. You have, because he is not you healthy. Are, he is not, he's fat. He's been fat since the 80s. Yes, he's not healthy. And ladies and gentlemen, we also told, let me talk, let's talk to the ladies for a minute too, Vlad. Because we never talk to the females on something. This is another thing that women need to understand. If a man invites you to his hotel room at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, doesn't necessarily mean you got to fuck him. But understand, understand, the, the, we're giving you the game. 
It's up to you how you process it. If a man says, come up to his room, ladies say no, unless you're willing to give us some ass. If you're not willing to fuck, do not go to his room. I'm telling you the game. I'm not, a, I'm not saying the man should take it. I'm saying, sir, that's okay. You can send me an Uber. I'm not in the mood. What men also, and I tell this to my sons, sometimes a girl can have a disease and tell you no, but men still want to push up, still want to go get the ass. Because, you know, some women don't know how to verbally say I got discharged or I was fucking early today or um, uh, I, I, just hit, I just got gang banged maybe two or three hours ago. So guys feel that they say, oh, no, bitch, you're going to fuck me without falling back because the female doesn't know how to tell you she's been sexually active already. And ladies, please be careful on what you wear around certain people. Some men just can't handle, some men just don't have self-control. And a girl will show her ass and titties and just lose it all. And I just want women to be as protected as men. And if both parties do what they're supposed to do, we can at least try to save somebody's life from going to prison over this bullshit. Let me tell you, I have interviewed dozens of gangsters yes. over the years. Dozens, dozens yes. and dozens. And not every time, but most times when you talk about a situation where they talk about getting shot. Yes. As you dig deeper and deeper in the story, it usually ends with a woman. Isn't that something? It's usually, oh yeah, well, what happened was I was messing with this girl yep. and and her boyfriend showed up and whatever. You know, I just interviewed Saigon, same story. He ended up shooting up this dude's car because he was with a girl and her boyfriend showed up and it turned into a situation. And then it turned into a shooting <laughs> and, and, and a bad, like violent incident. Some dude pulls up and just jumps out the car and snatches her off the car. I was like, yo. So first I grab her. We like playing tug of war with the, with the girl. And then I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Take her. You know what I'm saying? So then, you know, my pride gets in the way. Foolish pride. I'm like, what make this nigga think he can come on my, you know what I mean? Come around here. And it, but I still, didn't, I still didn't react at that time. And then I went up to him. And I was like, yo, fam, you know what I mean? If, if, if this your shorty or whatever, like, you know what I mean? No, no disrespect. I was like trying to be diplomatic about the shit. And he was like, man, fuck you, get out of my face. And when he did that, I ran in, ran in the house, got my little pistol, came back outside first. You know, that's when I shot his car up first. And then, then I pistol whipped him and we beat him up. Like shooting up the car is the reason why they gave me the felony, but we had beat the kid up really bad. When I ran up, when I ran outside the car, my, the dudes who was in the spot ran behind me. And my man had a, one of, not my man, he's a fucking sucker. Cause he's the one who told that I shot the gun. Kidding and cooler, bitch ass nigga. But he's he ran outside with like a curl ball. And while while we were just stomping the kid out, this dude hits the guy in that fucking face with a curl ball and breaks the bone in his eye and shit. Like, I remember I interviewed Dexter uh Dexter Sosa. Yes. You know, H Hussey, who was part of BMF. Yes. And he talked about how um uh Big Meech got shot. You know, way back, you know, before the whole shooting in Atlanta with Wolf. Yeah, the first yeah. time he got shot in Detroit, once again over a woman. Big Meech ends up getting shot. Yes. I guess he gets shot in the shoulder and the neck. Yes. What was that over? Uh, it, was, it was about a woman. There were one, of the, one guy was, you know, it was a, it was a okay, uh, I know we're filming, but I'm going to be kind of like, I'm not going to go into a lot with that. Because, you know, that's, you know, that's statute of limitations on that is it doesn't close. Wow. Like these stories just resurface over and over again. You know, <laughs> I've had viol I've had violent situations that have happened over a girl that I was dating that someone else, you know, felt like she belonged to them or right. whatever else. Yeah. Like, yeah. The most violent situation I've ever been in was because of that. In Isn't fact, that something? In, in fact, I'm not going to get into it because right. I understand. It's done, and I don't want to, you know, rip open old wounds. Yeah. But I'm saying the most violent situation I have ever been in in my entire life was over a woman. And men, men, you gotta stop. Yeah, I, I have so much pussy thrown at me that I'm gonna tell you how I handle this now, Vlad. You're gonna laugh. 
I might give a girl a number, she calls me, and I know she got someone, and this is what I say to them. Are you willing to take the risk if you get caught? Because mm. I want you to understand, is it worth it fucking me and your whole family is destroyed? Mm. Two, if we fucked already and you're trying to fuck me again, I've outgrown you. I don't want to put that into my life because my world is so peaceful. When I say that I'm a happy man, I'm happy, everything around me is just beautiful and positive, I just don't want no type of aggravation whatsoever, especially come as now, this means your ass going to be lonely. <laughs> so you got to be powerful enough to can to be, want to be by yourself and that's my definition of success i'm so mature and so in control of my of me i don't have to rush out there to sleep with anyone i have to rush out there to take somebody else's girl to have in bed with me to feel a certain way i don't have to do it i'm truly at peace and I think you'll understand this too, Vlad. If anything we can give to people in this world other than money, it's peace of mind. Mm -hmm. It's priceless. Yeah. Priceless. Yeah. And this is what people don't understand, right? Let's say you're talking to a 19-year-old, right? I'm 47. Yes. When I talk to a 19-year-old and I'm giving him advice on how to be an adult. Yes. What they have to realize is I'm not just more than twice their age. That 19-year-old that has been an adult for one year. Absolutely. I have been an adult since I was 18. Yes, sir. 20-something years. Yes, sir. I get it. <laughs> you know, I have been doing this way longer than you. Yes. You know, you're still a child when you're 17, 16, 15, still yeah. living at home. Don't have to pay any bills. Don't have right. to get a job. Just right. go to school and you have a roof over your head. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've always noticed that people who still have, live at home as adults are never the people who are successful in life. Mm. Ever. Ever. In fact, Chuck D, in my interview with him, said something very interesting. He said that he blames MTV for extending teenage years to 35. You know, M MTV and Viacom, I blamed them for years for t uh, extending teenage years to 35. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I, I can see where you're going with this. Vlad, we ain't getting to how old you are, but you know if a person's 21 I'm 40, years- I'm 46. You're 46. Yeah, All right. it's out there. You got people, when they turn 21, they think there's no way in hell they're gonna buy a house Yeah. until they're 46. That's half ass backwards. Wow. Because, and he's about the same age as you. Yeah. He said during his day, when you turn 18, you're expected to get a job. Yep. You're expected to get married. Right. You're expected to start looking for a house. Yes. You are an adult. You can't you can't sit at home and work things out at your parents' house for another three, four years and play video games. It's true. That's true. But now in 2020, now there's lots of excuses. Me and Jamel Hill had a whole conversation. She goes, Well, you know. Um, college loans are way worse these days. Well, housing prices are way higher these days than 30, 40 years ago. Yes. That, that's true. But a man is going to be a man and a boy is going to be a boy. Yep. Because if you want to go out there and get it, you got to go get it. Like my cousin used to say it all the time. He said, man, if you want it, you got to grind harder. Mm -hmm. People don't know, people don't understand what grinding harder means. You got to really understand and go get it. And you got to stack before you chase ass. Men, listen to me again. You got to stack before you chase ass. What's the purpose of meeting a woman to put yourself in debt? A woman is a bill, whether you look at it or not. If you're a real man, because a real man going to take going to take out to eat, going to take you shopping, you know, girl has some problems, you give her a few dollars. Now, if you if you play, you you a pimp, that means you're using a woman. You know that's what I call a pimp. You're using her, and mm -hmm. she's paying your bills. You living with her. You moving with her. Now you got some, you meet somebody that want to play you like that. Then congratulations, fool to the woman. But loneliness is a powerful thing. 
You know, loneliness is a pandemic itself. <laughs> and if you ladies and need that in your life, someone, because you know, you got some women who get money that makes them feel good to take care of a guy. It makes it feel good to take them shopping. And they think that it was crazy. The female think that she's really winning now. And then this guy got another woman. And then she gets upset to find out, wow, because what's so crazy about life? The people that are supposed to meet each other never do. If you meet someone that's good to you, you're cheating with another bitch. The person can't do nothing for you. And then when you get caught, you're like, oh, I'm sorry. And like when I do my podcast, the TK Kirkham podcast, when they call me, TK, what should I do? I tell people in a minute, leave the bitch or leave the man. Fuck that. Seven billion people in the world. You're going you're gonna to deal with this person that caught you cheating that you want to be with for the rest of your life. Now you're nervous because you don't know what they're going to do to you as you move forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, just recently, this news actually broke today. Uh, DJ Eric Murillo, who was a very famous, successful DJ, he did that song, uh, I Like to Move It, Move It. Yeah, that yeah. Guy. Well, one month ago, he was accused of sexual assault and battery. Wow. And today, at 49 years old, he was found dead. What? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This is crazy, now, man. Now, we don't know whether those two things are related. Yes. But as a 49-year-old, what seems to be a very healthy, you know, in-shape man. Yes. I would say this sounds like suicide or just an extreme drug overdose based on right. depression. Or the, old the girlfriend, depression. or a girlfriend, a girl, boyfriend found out and got upset. It's a lot, it's a, it's a lot of levels. It's like you can go a lot of... A lot of angles to this one, Vlad. Yeah. That's why I'm going to fuck with him, Vlad. Like, listen, my, my player days is done. Done. I ain't getting yeah. nobody nothing for their birthday. <laughs> I ain't taking nobody motherfucking shopping. I just want to love my children. That's that's what I want to do. I want to love my kids. Well, uh, recently Terry Crews Woo. suggested that uh, Magic City get shut down or boycotted or, or something. And, and, and I thought maybe it was a movie. You talking about the Magic City in Atlanta? Yeah, the strip club. Oh, my God. Why? I don't know, man. That's, that's your boy. Do you, you know Terry, right? I, I know. Listen to me. Like I said, and people who saw my other interviews, I've known Terry Crews for a long time. And I, 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 it's proud to know I helped him when he was going through some financial stress to see his success for his family because I saw how it was with him when he was struggling. It was not a good look. But some of these, th some of these things that... Terry Crews and this man, Kanye West. Matter of fact, I've gotten to the point, Vlad, if you don't mind, let's not even mention these two guys' names. And I'm going to explain to you why. Some things is just beneath common sense and intelligence. And I don't really think that we should waste our time on such buffoonery and ignorant things that some of these gentlemen do. I just, I just can't allow myself to do that. I get, it bothers me. It really does. It really does. Fair enough. Yes, Fair sir. enough. We'll get off. We'll get off the topic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, just recently, uh, two people were charged with the murder of Jam Master J. Mm. And I remember a couple of years ago, um, I had this dude. He was like the hip hop cop of New York, uh, yes. Derek Parker, I believe. He said that he he knows who killed Jam Master J, and they're going to be brought to justice pretty soon. A bunch of time had passed. Everyone thought it was over, but sure enough, now it came up. The feds have now charged two of the guys. One of the guys is Jam Master J's godson. 
Yeah, it's always the person close to you. Yeah. Now, why and did they throw in it was something about some money? Well, the story goes, according to investigators, okay. is that Jam Master J was involved in some sort of cocaine deal. And at one point he pulled out of it and his other partners were upset over that. And this was retaliation for that. You got to be fucking kidding me. This is this is the story that they're saying. Okay. Uh, I have no idea. Yeah, like, we don't. No, we don't. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody. Nobody there. knows. This was a long time ago. Yes. I don't know what he was involved with. Whether he's not, I do know that he was a founding member of one of the greatest hip hop groups of all yes, time. Yes. Run DMC, uh, iconic DJ, also the person responsible for Fifty Cent. Yes. Uh, o- Onyx and a whole bunch of other iconic uh, musical acts. Yes. And the guy. The, the godson, because basically, I, I remember I spoke to someone who's sort of close to the Jam Master J okay. situation, you know, who actually was real close to Jay himself. Mm-hmm. This was their bodyguard's son. Wow. And Jam Master J was his godson. Yeah. So this was someone that was very close. And when you looked at this guy's uh, Instagram page, he's he's like posting up next to Jam Master J, like murals and stuff like that. Isn't this something? The mind... The mind of people. That's why I listen to me. I tell my kids, I tell you, don't trust nobody. And be careful who you let in your motherfucking house. Mm -hmm. Be careful who you let in your home. Because people come in your home, because that's that's normally when the robbery comes. People have been in your house and seen what you have. Yeah, I, I could actually pinpoint situations with relationships that I've had with with friends or prior friends that have changed after they've come over to my house and seen how I live. <laughs> that means you're living good. I'm living good. Right. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, sometimes people don't want you to be living better than them, especially if they feel that they're higher up than you are. Yes, sir. For, for whatever reason. Right. They show up at your house and they're like, damn, I ain't got this. Right, right. All right, how, how am I going to... You know, sneak diss them, or how am I going to do something kind of sideways? Isn't there something of, about the mind? That's yeah. how come I don't get a lot of celebrities who show off what they have on social media. You know, I come from that era where you never posted your jewelry, your cars, or where you lived. Never. Mm-hmm. And yep. To see these young men and women who do that, to see it's so bad that the young kids commit crimes and then post it, who they robbed, where they just came from. Like a, a, a cop can look th- directly at the, they don't have to do in, in real investigation work anymore. It's right there on social media. Well, yeah, I mean, Pop Smoke from... All the information that's out right now. Yes, he got, he got murdered over flashing his address in L.A. Yes, I on saw social that. media. Yep. Uh, the five guys that have been arrested for his murder were people he had never met before. Yes, a bunch of young 17, 18, 19 year olds from L.A. that had a history of robbing and shooting people. Right. So said, "Oh wow, here's a lick. Oh, I know where that house is. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the that's the Hollywood Hills. Oh, that's the that's the number. Right. Okay." Let me go over there and rob him. You know, he's, 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 he's got hundreds of thousands of dollars of jewelry on. He's flashing all his designer gear he got. Right. Oh, that looks, he's about my size. Right. And next thing you know, a robbery turns into a murder, turns into five people arrested. Some of them are facing the death penalty. Uh, such a waste of life overall. Such a waste of life. Pop Smoke was 20 years old. Yes. Over material things. And think about it. Let, things. Let's just let's just break it down for a second. All okay. Right? Let's just let's just say you manage to get all his jewelry and you get out the house, you know, free and clear. Yes. Right. Let's say you got two hundred thousand dollars worth of custom jewelry. You're not going to sell that for two hundred thousand. You're not going even. No. Even if close. it was, e- even if you legally had it, you're not going to sell custom jewelry for what you bought it for. Yeah, absolutely. At the, at the most legally. If you legally have it, you might get half. You might get a hundred thousand for the, the the metal of the diamonds, right? Or probably lower. Probably lower. But let's just say a hundred thousand. Yes. But then now it's stolen. Yes. So now you got to go to someone that's going to accept 
stolen property and take on that risk themselves. Yeah. So you might as well cut that in half again. Yes. Fifty thousand dollars. Yes. Fifty thousand dollars, and you got like three to five other people. Let's say you, there's five people that have been arrested for it. Ten thousand dollars, life in prison, or sitting on death row waiting for the death penalty yes. for ten thousand dollars. I don't care how broke you are. Ten thousand dollars is not going to change your life. It's not going to change your life. Maybe for a split second. Split see now, second. people too. See when you understand what money is, me and you know, and a lot of people probably know, ten thousand ain't shit. Ain't shit. Ten thousand ain't shit. A hundred thousand ain't shit. A hundred thousand ain't shit. And it's just truth. And ladies and gentlemen, we're not trying to act like we have more than y'all trying to put you down. We just really no. saying some real shit here. Fuck about the money. Let's not lose control about the money. What we're trying to say is stop risking your life over some stupid shit to go to jail. I got a friend in jail now. I, I saved him the first time. He gets back with the same guy. They doing credit cards. They go through the mailman. The mailman gets caught. Now, because the mailman is, is caught, now it's federal. Both these guys in jail, one's doing seven, one's doing four years for $18,000. Yeah. Of clothes. Yeah. Not no real shit. Belts and fucking shoes. Yeah. You got to be out your motherfucking mind. Yeah. And every time we talk, I try to bring it up about a conversation I had with them at one time, explaining to them that this wasn't worth it. And they, no one believed me, but then I wind up two, three years later being a character witness for both of them in federal court downtown Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. And now uh, Chris Darden, who became famous for the OJ trial, he's actually representing he's representing one of Pop Smoke's murder suspects. I read that. I did read that. And I was like, man, it... I mean, he has to work. He has to work. He, like, he does not. He does not have to take on this case. I think he might turn it down. But isn't he like the main prosecutor in LA County? Uh, well, no. I he mean, has to take what they he, tell he, him. He's not a. He's not a prosecutor. He's a private defense attorney. Oh, he's not a prosecutor. Shit. So he's no, doing he, it for the publicity. Pro bono, obviously. Yep. Yep. Because remember, he was originally representing. Shitty cuz who right. killed uh Yeah, Nipsey they was Hussle. gonna get him. That was yeah, they was gonna get he him. He had to drop that case as if this case is gonna be a, a walk so in the park. So let me ask you a question. So he's not working with the No, he's no, a he pro left. He left the you know, he left, you know, the city prosecution okay. after the whole OJ thing. That's what I so still he, thought he was getting this. He he's been he's been a private lawyer all these decades. Man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's been a private So he's making some time. bad choices because obviously he's trying to do what? The publicity? It, it appears to me like Chris Darden has just accepted that black people aren't going to like him. So he's just doing whatever, <laughs> whatever, wow. he, whatever he's going to do, almost like throwing it in, in everyone's face. Like, right. oh, y'all don't like me. Well, I'm going to represent the people that y'all really hate. Right, right. It's, uh, but you, you hear what we're talking about here, Vlad? Let's take a moment to hear the things that we are talking about is people's choices. Their choices are horrible. These choices that you, these, these ladies and men are doing is horrible. Earlier today I saw um, an IG post where a white guy paid some woman, didn't pay this girl for some pussy. She had him in the car with a knife and was talking about how you're going to pay me my money, et cetera. The guy was crying in the back seat. Now, all this is on video now. They think they're embarrassing him, but they're actually setting themselves up to go to jail. And you have a deadly weapon in your hand. You have a deadly yeah. weapon in your hand. <clears throat> Just like recently, the woman who ran over her boyfriend. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yelling over him, screaming, I gave you 18 years, took the bumper, threw it on him. All on video. Now, what people don't understand, and ladies and gentlemen, I need you to listen very carefully. You could talk shit all you want, you could shoot a motherfucker. 
You can go beat somebody up and go rob them. They got a place for you. When your ass get caught, all that emotion, I was upset, you better control it because they got a place for you. And when those gates close on your ass at 11 o'clock at night or whenever you get through processing and you sleep on that thin ass motherfucking mattress and, 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 and you walk in there with 5, 10, 12 different guys and you go into your quarters and that gate closed. All lights go out. You just see the out of the out of the window in your cell. You see the little night light that they have in the jail shining. You don't know what time it is. You don't know if it's sunny or night outside. You'll say to yourself, "I could have did this different." Then wake up the next morning, miss breakfast, or wake up the next morning. They got the little milk thing for you. And some fucked up Cheerios. <laughs> Man, they do not want that life. I don't care. No, it ain't worth it. No, I managed to, I mean, I've done, a, you know, some couple of little one or two days in jail yes. for, you know, suspended license type shit yeah. here and there. But but no, I've made sure I've never done anything to go to prison. That's good. That's I've good. never broken any laws to the point where this comes with prison time. Yes. I almost I, I never went to prison, but I had some close calls. And I could say it wasn't a rough time, it was just a, a um amazing experience now when I was in Rikers Island. Mm. And I was in the tombs. I was in the tombs for maybe two weeks. Then they transfer you up to Rikers Island. So I got put to Rikers Island twice on the same case. Because when I fought my case, what I did was I didn't like the attorney that I had, because he trying to make fucking deals with the prosecutor. But this is why, ladies and gentlemen, you got to have money. This is what I'm about to tell you. I went through seven attorneys on a case in the 90s until I found the right motherfucker that was going to be the right person for it. And that was 70 grand, because you go, you got to give up 10,000 up front before even anything happened. If you go to trial, they want all this extra money. So I would give the money if I didn't like what the fuck was going on in, in the court system, I would fire him. Because one thing that taught me, and listen to me very carefully, ladies and gentlemen, you got to find an attorney that has chemistry with the judge. Mm. See, it was a time, Vlad, when I knew I had a case, I would find out who the judge was. I would go there weeks before... My case will come up, sit in the back to see who the judge had a relationship with. And if I saw that that relationship was cool, I will follow that attorney out and ask him for his car and say, I want to hire you. Because so the same thing in fighting the case, you got to put your research and you got to do your due diligence if you want to save your life. And these are some of the things I was willing to do to save my life. And I actually did that. Sat in the back and watched. Mm, smart. Yep. Sure smart. did. Because it's all about relationships. You know one of the dumbest things I've seen in court? When Bill Cosby came and brought an um, a out-of-state attorney to the Philadelphia court system. Now, I could tell, tell you right now how um, Bill Cosby... Could have walked away from that deal. You ready? I'm ready. One, you find a local attorney that's been going to that judge and that court for years that got a relationship with the judge or the prosecutor. You let a couple years go by. Now, now nine times out of ten, prosecutors are gonna say, "Nope, whatever you want. Nope." But what happens over time? They might need your attorney or something might come up, they need you. Or better yet, the heat is not so high anymore. Now they're willing to give you a deal. Now, what Cosby should have did was take a plea deal. I would have never went to trial. I would have paid a fine. And I would have did a year or two and registered as a sex offender. But guess what? I'll be out. 
Guess what? When he gets out anyway, he's going to be a sex offender. Right. <laughs> Either way. Either way, you're going to be a sex offender. But I have never did a day in jail. People don't think when it comes to these attorneys. They just go again off emotions. And ladies and gentlemen, again, this episode right here with me and Vlad, we always try to give you guys game to better your life. It's about choices. Good. Remember the old song, A Difference A Day Makes? That's some real yep. shit. Yep. Well, since our last interview, there was a whole situation with Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion. Yes. Now, the story is still somewhat fuzzy. Yes. Uh, allegedly, Megan and Tori were in a car together. Some sort of altercation happened. And Megan claims that Tori shot her in the foot. Right. Now, everyone is taking sides. I saw that. I saw a lot that. of people, like Bun B, who's my man, you know, he he cussed out Tory Lane, said it was some whole shit, whatever else. Other men, you know, are, are standing up for Megan. Then there's dudes who are saying, no, it's Megan's fault and so forth. Because, you know, Megan is like six feet or 5'10". Right. Tory's 5'2". Right. That's and she probably got, a, probably got 100 pounds on him. Right. Of, of muscle. Yes. And meat. Right. And a lot of people got mad at me for saying this, but I'm going to say it. Okay. It's my motherfucking platform. That's right. It is it's your it shit. Is. <laughs> it's my shit. That's right. The elephant in the room that no one wants to say in this situation is that nobody knows the whole story. Nobody. Megan has given a few small details about what happened. Tori has said nothing. Yes. And the LAPD has not released a statement or is even saying if anyone's being prosecuted or not. Yes. So I'm just going to say, I don't have an opinion about this. I don't know what happened. It's the right thing to say. I don't know what happened. Oh, a woman got shot by a man. That's all you have to know. Ah, uh, no, that's not all I have to know. Let me right. tell you, there, there's a good reason to shoot somebody. Right, <laughs> okay? right, right. <laughs> I'm not saying to do it, Right. but there, there is a good reason to shoot somebody. Right, right. If, if your life is being threatened, a, yes. If my life is being threatened, I'm right. going to shoot somebody. Yes. If you're if you're telling me that you're going to, that you, my kids are being held hostage and, and you know, I'm going I'm to kill them, I might shoot that person. Because you really like, got to be, how can, how can I put this? I wouldn't shoot a woman. I kind of hear what they're saying also, that a man shouldn't shoot a woman. But when you, if you have a short complex, it could be anything. You could have a short complex. She could have been talking to him reckless, and he just didn't like it. And let's well, right. be thankful and if, and if, he didn't kill her. Right, and if that's the case, I'm all on Megan's side. Right. Fuck him, if that's what happened. Right. Fuck him. You know, And, and we don't really know whether... because. She showed her foot that looked fucked up, but it didn't look like a bullet was in her foot. It looked like fragments, like a ricochet. I totally sort. agree. It doesn't look like you know, a bullet hit her. I, I, I I've, saw I've that. Seen, I yeah, said, that I've looks seen, like a bullet shot you. Yeah. I've seen bullet wounds before. Yes. And it does It does not look like that. That doesn't look like a bullet it wound. It does not look like that. Now, maybe a shot got fired and it ricocheted because the LAPD say that it looked like broken glass. Yes. You know, her wounds were, were consistent with broken glass. I don't know what and here's happened. Here's what nobody's but, even thinking about. You ready? Because this had been a publicity stunt. Well, I mean, not a very good one for Tory because he hasn't said a word since. Like, he hasn't done shit. But that's what nobody's <laughs> pressing charges on anybody, right? No. Nope. So think about this no for one, a second. No one has pressed charges at this point. We've been, I've been in a case. And let me say, you're not a dummy, Vlad. Listen to what I'm saying. If there's a case... And a gun is involved, and someone yeah. got shot. Somebody's gonna be locked up right now. Yeah, they don't play with that. They might let you go if you're white. No disrespect, but you black shooting another person, and nobody's locked up. I, listen, listen to me again. The, I didn't mind talking about it, but when we deal with something that's beneath our intelligence. We want to comment on it and keep it moving. There's so many other things that you and I can discuss in this world to save lives. So Future has six children, I believe, from six different mothers. Yes. 
let me double check this. Yep. Six women, six children from six different women. Yes. Most recently, he got this one woman pregnant uh, named uh, Eliza Rain. Okay. She took him. Well, first he claimed it wasn't his. Mm -hmm. So so she went and got one of his other baby mothers and did a, a DNA test with that kid, <laughs> with her kid, to Whoa. prove that it was futures. That's fucking clever. <laughs> clever. Yes. Clever. Because then with that point, it's established that, yeah, this is his child right. based on this other Ooh, child. Oh, that's right? clever. So let's look at Futures Net Worth. Let's just look it up. Okay. Futures Net Worth. They're saying he's worth $40 million. Okay. Sounds about right. Okay. Sounds about right. As a guy who knows how money moves around with all of those albums and all those number one songs yes. and, and all the features and everything, 40 million sounds about right. Yes. So she took him to court and she requested 53,000 a month in child support. Man. That's, you know, around half a million dollars plus. Right. About 600,000 600, or so. He counter-offered with $1,000 a month. Damn. And a judge decided that she's getting $3,200 a month. Okay. Which is the equivalent of $38,400 a year. Yes. Which just goes to show, ladies, if you think you're going to get rich by getting pregnant by a wealthy man, and you really want to tie yourself into a baby that you may not even want, with a man that doesn't want you. Yes. Look at this thirty-eight thousand four hundred dollars before making that. Decision. Not just that. Here's the thing: what I want women to understand. To have a people have taken, women have taken the beauty of having a man that you love, child. We have women who will sleep with a guy, and everybody's wrong on all levels. Now let's make sure we're clear. The man is wrong for nutting in her way out of condom. The woman is wrong for letting him nut in her without a condom. But what's crazy, you're going to have a man's child you don't even know. Hmm. You're going to have a man's child you never met his mother, you never met his dad, you never been to his house, you don't know who his grandmother looked like, you don't know there's something in the family that's wrong, you have no idea what's healthy about the child that you're about to give to this man that you met at a club. You know nothing about him. So now, when he doesn't want to give you the kind of money that you want, now he's not shit because I want women to think. Try to also date a man instead of a one night stand. Try to have your own shit just in case you do get pregnant you don't have to go after the guy. Because women for years have always said, oh, he ain't got shit or he ain't shit. Well, you ain't got it either. So if I ain't shit, you ain't shit. Because guess what? You don't have it either. So my point is we can save a lot of young kids and girls and boys for coming to this world unwanted because of a hot, steamy night that you got pregnant and you chose to keep the baby. And most men are not going to be the type of father you want from a one night stand because there's no bond. There's no, no connection there amongst the souls. It was just a hit. So now the kid grows up, the child's like, oh, dad, you know, um, you ain't shit and you got to keep it real with your kid. Listen. I fucked your mom one night and I never saw her no more. It wasn't like I was against being a father to you. Your mom should have just told you the truth. Like, yeah, I was out, hung with you, your dad, we fucked and I never saw him again. He's really a nice guy. He really takes care of his real family. It's just that <laughs> I gave him some pussy one night and I wasn't responsible either. Everybody got to be accountable. Right. There's actually a famous book called The Outliers uh -huh. uh, by Malcolm, Malcolm Gladwell. Yes, sir. Famous, uh, you know, New York Times bestselling author. And I remember reading it and they did these tests, right? And 
right around the mid 80s, mid to late 80s, they saw that crime had dropped off significantly okay. in America. And they were trying to figure out why that happened. You know, the police force was relatively the same. The, you know, the economic conditions were relatively the same. Yes, sir. And ultimately, this was the solution they think is what happened. In 1973, abortion was legalized. Mm. So suddenly, for the first time in American history, all these children that were going to be born into bad situations. Yes. Like what you're talking about. You know, being born when the father is married to someone else, and this was just a one night stand, to a, a rape, to to like an, a, a you know teenage a teenage couple that has no chance of actually raising a child properly yes. and so forth. You just took millions of people that would have been born in these bad situations, and you just took them out of the equation. Yep. A majority, of, I'm not going to say majority, but a large number of those people would have grown up and possibly become criminals based on the, the environment that they grew up on. I Not totally because agree. they're good or bad people or, yes. or racial, whatever. Right. If you're growing up and your mom is 15 and your dad is 14 yes. and and grandma is, is doing her best to take care of you or or whatever else, or yeah, you know, your dad is, is married to a whole other family and your yes. mom is telling you your dad ain't shit and right. she's struggling and, and she's taking him to, to child support and whatever, you know, to divorce, you know, to, to uh, child support court, whatever mm -hmm. else, you're growing up in a messed up situation, there is a much greater chance you're going to end up getting into crime later on. I totally agree. As opposed to a good two-parent household where... Two people got together and said, we want to make a child. It makes a big we're difference. We're going to plan this together. Yes. We're first going to get married. We're going to make sure that we have $50,000 in the bank to, to yep. you know, so we're ready for the school, yes. the doctor bills, and all, all the I other agree. stuff because kids are expensive. We are planning this child. There is statistically a lower chance that this child will become a criminal later. I, it makes a big difference, sir. And, man, and that's what we want everybody to hear what me and you are talking about. Some of y'all are going to be too late. Some of y'all, as we're talking right now, just nothing in the bitch. <laughs> right now, you just nothing. I see you. Just nothing. Now your life is fucked up. I had a gentleman. Um, I was in Virginia. I was up early in the morning walking around. There's a guy from my podcast, Vlad. He wanted to know, should he marry this woman? And the woman made $200,000. Yeah, I could tell you, he was really impressed by what she made, right? Let's, let's keep it like, he was impressed. He goes ahead and marry her. 18 months later, they get in divorce. She wants him out the house. Um, so I asked him, how much did he put down the house? He said five, she put 20. She wants me to go. So talking to me, whoever calls me, I'm your private attorney or your private um, life coach. So I said, you're not leaving until she buys you out. She has to give you 20000 on your five because you're a businessman. You're not going to give no woman $5,000. She's going to say it's motherfucking over and put you out and you ain't get investment on your, on your money. What I'm saying to the people out here that's listening to this episode is put the emotions aside and listen to what Vlad just said. Listen to what I'm saying about chasing ass and chasing dick. And this is something I really found out. If you truly take the time to get a woman's number or a man's number and not get around them for at least 30 days and just talk to them on the phone, Zoom or whatever, you're going to find something that you may not like about this motherfucker. And you're going to be glad you ain't give this girl no dick. And you're going to be glad you ain't give this man some pussy. Because you don't, you because you got to find out the surroundings, how a person is living. See, people don't get caught up in that. You know, I won't go to a woman's house that I can't find parking for my car. I'm not going in an apartment building. <laughs> I'm rich. My, yeah. I've grown as a man. I could like you, but I may not like the way. You live. Is that bad on my part? No. I think it's growth. I come from the hood. 
I remember one time meeting a girl out on the West Coast, but she lived in my hometown, Jersey City, New Jersey. And I said to myself one time, why should I go visit this girl in a place that I grew up in? All these women in the world. I'm going to start flying back to Jersey City to see this girl over some ass. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't do it because life is about growth. And I tell this to people all the time. Your, if your life is not getting better as you get older, it's something that you're doing wrong. Whatever you have in the bank today, you should have more in the bank next year. If you're fat this year, you should be in shape next year. Your mindset should be better next year than it is this year. If you're searching for a male or female in your relationship, the quality of women and men that you choose should be better as you move forward in life. Bottom line. And if you're not doing any of these things, your life is stagnated. You have not grown at all. And life's about growth. Well, speaking about money, it was just announced while we're talking mm -hmm. that Tyler Perry is now officially a billionaire. Damn. Yep. Forbes has estimated that since 2005, he has earned more than $1.4 billion in pre-tax income. Man. Which he used to buy homes in Atlanta, New York, Los Angeles, and Jackson Hole, Wyoming. He owns two planes. <laughs> awesome. And this is what he said in the article. He said, I love when people say you come from humble beginnings. It means you're poor as hell. It also makes success sweeter. Ownership changes everything. Yep. And let, let me tell you, and I, I I don't I don't talk about my finances. I don't I never post my bank accounts yes, yeah. or even my my cars or my jewelry or, or none of that shit. Yes, sir. But I, I can tell you that some of these people you see on TV or on the radio yes. that look that look that are way more famous than I am. Yes, sir. I think if we sit down and open up our bank accounts, yep. you're gonna see that I, I'll, I'll put a lot of them to shame. Yes. Because for the last twelve years, I have owned every single piece of content that I've ever put out, and that's the key. Remember, I was on your show. I talk about. I don't. I don't talk about it much. But I own my own record label. I own mm -hmm. my own production company, and that, that puts out my uh, comedy specials. I own it. I don't have to wait for HBO to give me a check, or Netflix mm -hmm. to give me a check. If I want to go put record, put something up, I could do it. Like I was going to work on my new special this year to release the, any of it. The pandemic messed everything up. I, my goal was to always drop a special every year, drop a comedy album every year because of catalog. Mm -hmm. See, I try to come to some comedians about my label because I, I, I tried to explain to them, you're not getting a catalog. You've been on the road all these years. Okay, yeah, you could be making money here and there, but yo, another check? It's, called, it's like the music guys. Some of these guys who got big hits still get checks. Had probably had a hit years ago. Mm -hmm. Ain't had to put a song out since then, but get a nice Sir, check. Sir Mix a lot. When I interviewed him, he said that he made a hundred million dollars off Baby Got Back. Damn. Thirty years later, he is still maintaining the same lifestyle that he has back when that song came out. Yep. He's still driving McLarens. He lives in a ridiculous house wow. in Seattle. Wow. Ridic like it's all like a hundred acres. Like Man. it's crazy. He is balling. He's if he puts out some music, it's because he feels like putting out some music. Yep. He doesn't care if it makes a penny. Exactly. And like that's what I is, mean. Yeah, he is completely balling. It's all because of ownership. And let me tell you, when you own something, here here's the beautiful part about owning something. And I'll and I'll open up a little piece of my business to everyone who's watching. Okay, great. For years, I built my business around YouTube. All my interviews got put on YouTube and, and those, those videos monetized. Yes. Right? And, and I make money off those videos. Yes. Now, at one point, I figured out, you know something? I've got this, this, this back catalog of stuff. Whenever a piece of news comes out that relates to one of my old videos, I put it out as a flashback. Mm -hmm. Now, every day, there's a new flashback. And every one of those flashbacks makes money all... You know, all over again. Right. And then in the past year, Facebook just announced that they're monetizing videos on Facebook. 
So I got to take my whole catalog from YouTube and put it on Facebook. And now that's making money. Awesome. awesome. It's all because of ownership. If I just got a check to go in and do an interview on someone else's platform. Yes. I will still be having to keep doing that over and over again until I'm old and gray. Right. You know, at this point, I have a catalog and I have ownership. And this is, I'm not a billionaire by any stretch of the imagination. But you I'm have the magic word, to... catalog and catalog. ownership. Yep. And that's how Tyler Perry became a billionaire. Yes. Through ownership. That's how Kanye became a billionaire, yes. allegedly, because of ownership. That's because, that's how Jay-Z, with all the brands that he owns and the catalogs that he owns, it's because of ownership. Yeah. You do not see a single person on the Forbes list that got there because they get a really good salary. Oh, absolutely not. Not one. Not one. You got to own. You got to own. You got to own. You got to own. Well, recently I had Akon on the show. Okay. And this is a story that I've been hearing about for a very long time. But since me and him sat down and we actually have a really good relationship with each other, he told me all about the story. Okay. And it was about the story about how Suge Knight got knocked out by his road manager. Wow, interesting. John. You know about the story? I know about the story, but I don't know. I, heard, I just heard that Akon people put a whooping on his ass. So, you know, we'll play a piece of the clip and so forth. But okay. to make a long story short, short story long, like E-40 likes to say, essentially... Uh, Suge Knight was doing the Suge Knight thing. He had a guy, a producer named Detail, who claimed that Akon owed him some money. Right. So he pushed up on Akon one day and said, hey, look, we you owe us $25,000. And right. Akon said, all right, cool. Like, yeah, I mean, he signed, a, you know, this, this producer is now signed to us. When he gets some placements in and that money comes in, you guys will get the money first. Right. Then some months later, same situation. Where's my money? I told you once again, when the money comes in, y'all going to have it. Right. And then the third day, you know, the third time comes along. Once again, you know, where's my money? Like, you know, we're going to get it to you. Or we're not used to waiting. You know what right. I'm saying? Over here, whatever. And then Akon's man, Ja, came in and basically said, look, you're not going to get your money now. If you want to go in the bathroom, we could fight. Right. So then Suge says, I don't fight. I'll have your mother killed. I'll have your whole family killed. Wow. And he just he just started going off and off on that. And Ja ended up just losing his temper and, and knocked him out. Man. And then, according to both Ja and Akon, Suge ended up pressing charges. From Ja's point of view, he's probably going to be mad at me for sharing the story. But Well, if he shared it with you, then it's cool. It is what it is. I I'd rather come from your mouth, yeah. not mine. <laughs> he basically said that Suge approached you guys, about some money that was owed. Ja got involved in the conversation at one point. Mm -hmm. You know, Suge said he wanted his money right then and there. And Ja's like, yo, we're going to pay you, but through the proper means. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get hostile like this, we can go to the bathroom and we can fight. Right. And Ja is a big, is about... Probably bigger than Shug. No, they're about the same size. About the same size. Shug is actually, very, so very Shug is actually a little bit bigger than Ja, actually. Okay. Yeah. Ja's probably not as tall, but he's a right. bit wider. Yeah, no, they, they both stocky. They're both they, huge. Mm -hmm. Right? So Ja said, yo, we can go to the bathroom if you could fight, and we could fight if that's what you want to do. And he said, at that point, Shug was like, motherfucker, I don't fight. I, I'll have your mother killed. You know, I'll have your whole family killed. I'll have. <laughs> <laughs> And Josh said he just had enough at that point. <laughs> he said he just, the, the mouthing off and the threats and all that, he said Ja just reached his breaking point. Get the fuck out. Yeah. That was just a money grab. That was just a money grab. And see, here's the thing about, I've told you before and I'll tell you how I move on situations like that in the community. Akon, believe it or not, grew up in my hometown, Jersey City, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. That's where I grew up. So yep. me and him are close. I know him very well. Suge used to be my bodyguard on tour with NWA. So me being the kind of man that I am, I'm not going to respond to the story. I just, I'm glad that you was able to tell me the story because I respect both of them for how they always treated me. We all got bad stories, right? We all got bad stories. But I could honestly say this, Suge 
treated me well. Even when I did him wrong. You know, I robbed Suge once. I did him wrong. And um, I got a phone call. We talked about it. It was going to be some heavy shit going on. And, but me being a man, I did what was right, paid the debt back. I paid the debt back. But me and him have always been one side. Yes, the things that he did to other people in the world from Akon on, I used to feel bad about it. Because just like he told me, TK, you are going to be a great comedian. He could have been one of the greatest business music moguls in the world. Hands yes. down. Nobody would, yep. no one would have never even came close to him. You ever seen the documentary with Dr. Dre, with um, Jimmy Iving? Yeah. Do you see yep. how Suge was with? Was with the Kennedys playing yeah. football. Yeah. Damn. If that ain't I mean, a come up. I mean, look, I mean, yes, he's around the Kennedys and so forth, but think about who was actually under his company. At one point, yes. he had Dr. Dre, yes. arguably the greatest producer of all time. Yes. In any genre of music. Yes. Tupac. Yep. Arguably the best rapper of all time. Yes. Period. And Snoop Dogg, who is up there yes. in, in one of the as one of the, continues to be one of the greats. Yes. And then you throw in, you had DJ Quick, you had Joe to see, you had Mary J. Blige, you had the Dog Pound, you had Rage. Like you had just an unbelievable amount of talent. You had left eye at yes. one point. Like you had an unbelievable amount of talent that was all under your umbrella. All you had to do was treat those people well and they would have stayed. Yep. And this is what I come, it all comes back to bad choices. All comes back. And ladies and gentlemen, never let money ruin you. Never, never let it ruin you. Never let it get you off your square and you get to treat people well. You forget to be kind to people. Because one thing I could tell you, them tables do turn. If you live long enough, them tables do turn. And you want to treat everybody well because you never know how that shit going to come back around. Yeah, I mean, Suge created this monster of himself, this, yes. this image of himself that just drove any serious business person away. Yes. Like I've interviewed so many people around the death row story, you know, damn near all the artists. Yes. Uh, all the, all the, the gangsters around it, all, all of Tupac's people, Snoop's people, whatever else. I've never once wanted to do anything with Suge because of his reputation. Yep. I've been I've been in the same room with Shug multiple times. Never yeah. introduced myself, and I'm the kind of person that'll introduce myself to whoever I'm interested. Right, in. right. Like, like yo, if I want to interview this person, I will just I'll go walk past their security and be like, right. yo, I'm so and so. Right. You know, have you heard of me? If not, let me introduce myself, and then we'll take it from there. Yes, sir. I've been around Shug, and people are like, why don't you interview Shug? It's like nothing good ever comes from doing business with Shug. That's from so every true. single person I've talked to, yeah. I've never heard a person say. Me and Shug had a business relationship, and it's great, and I want to continue working with it. I've, so I've never heard that. <laughs> I've, never, I've, never heard, I've never heard it. That is I've never so heard true. It. You're right. You're you know, right. Nick, Can Nick Cannon got something going with Suge. Maybe that'll work out. But you right. know, I interviewed Matt, ba Matt Barnes had the, the rights to Suge's story at one point. And as he started to get into it, he found out that the story was sold to like five other people, and it got to the point where he just had to cut his losses and leave. Man. You actually own the life rights to Suge Knight? No, so I was a part of a pro uh, a project that we did current or we we did have the rights to uh, through his niece, uh, but it just kind of started getting messy the further and further it went down. I uh, ended up hooking them up with messy uh, business with Suge Knight. Really, right, I've never heard of that before. I ended up hooking them up with uh, <laughs> with Mark Kenton, the creative power, and, and and had these guys all excited about doing the story. And then you know once this shit got real, there was. You know, so and so needs this amount of money, and so and so needs that amount of money, and now someone else is because we didn't get this. Someone else has the right, so it just kind of got messy. Uh, so I just respectfully had to, to to back away from that project. 
that type of shit. Like, it doesn't even have to be violent. It just, it's just like just not good business. all over the place. Like, yo, like, why, why would you? You're sitting there pressing up on Akon's crew, and you know this guy's a multimillionaire. You yep. know this guy. You know this guy is not just a regular dude on the street. He's not a regular he's, dude. He's he's surrounded by gangsters. Yeah, like, and that's a- for real. Akon surrounds himself with gangsters. Yes. I've seen it fir- first fucking hand. Yes, sir. Like, you know, and you're sitting there pushing the line with him over $12,500. Yep. When you, you were running a company worth hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions. You're sitting there over, over a $10,000 debt and, and you end up getting assaulted in the process. You, you know, you... you it, it ends up being a bad look for you overall. Yep, there's a picture of you, you know, there, there's now TMZ is a picture of you laid out right. unconscious on, on, on the ground, yes. which is embarrassing to your family yes, and, it is. and so forth. Like over $12,500. It's not worth it. It's, it's not. I just, again, I'm glad you're bringing up all these stories because again, it just falls under the category of your choices. I want to share this with the world. I want just hear what's going on. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, there is levels to crime. Every, everybody in the George Floyd, let's take George Floyd. Everybody's responsible. And watch where I'm going with this. When George Floyd woke up that morning, George Floyd was going to commit a crime. Period. He went to put his pants on at breakfast. Boom, he went to go commit a crime. That was only $20 counterfeit money, but it was a crime. The person who made the phone call is also responsible for the crime. Because see, when you call the cops on a black man, it's a 99% chance it can go either way. It could be good or it could end in murder. The cop who put his neck, his knee on George Floyd's neck was also responsible. Three levels to this of choices. Also, the point is, ladies and gentlemen, if you're a criminal, guys or women, this is just me now, stop resisting arrest. Doesn't mean you should get murdered, but you know that they'll kill you first and ask questions later. If you get caught, so you got to understand about, see, people don't understand crime. You get caught, you got to be just as man enough as you bold to go do what you want to do. When you get caught, you put your hands up, go the fuck to jail, and you live to see another day and you bail out. Now, this, now somebody's going to argue with me and say, that doesn't happen all the time. You're absolutely right. Doesn't. You could have your hands up, they'll still kick you. They'll still shoot you dead, depending on the cop. So that's when you got to hope and pray that this turns out well. All right? Got to hope and pray. The gentleman who just got shot in the back. Now, when no cops went to grab him and he snatched away, the young man, no disrespect when I say this, should have stopped because they know that these cops will kill you. You walk around to your car door, open the car door, and go in. These motherfucking cops don't know what you're getting ready to do. They don't know they're scared already. You know they're fucking scared. You got to stop resisting arrest. Does it mean you still may not get shot? No. The goal is to see another motherfucking day. The goal is to take care of your family, whether you go to jail for five years, two years, or ten years. Guess what? You get another shot. The gentleman who got shot in Atlanta, who sat there, he's on video, he talked to the cops for 45 minutes. When they got ready to put the handcuffs on him, he wanted to fight the cops, take the guy's taser, run, turn around, and try to shoot whatever he had. Was it wrong for him to die? Hell fucking yeah, it was wrong for him to die. But don't put yourself in a position for it to happen. Now, there's also levels to that. The manager at Wendy's, knowing in Atlanta, knowing that the George Floyd situation had just happened a few weeks earlier, the manager of Wendy's could have walked outside, because he wasn't doing that, he was just sleeping in the car. Knocked on his window and said, young man, are you okay? 
hey, just come over to the side for a minute and park and sleep it off because I think you're drunk. See, there's levels to this. Even the cops that shot that young man could have shot the gun in the sky. Or, matter of fact, just let him run because guess what? You had his car. You could easily get his registration from the license plate and go pick him up the next day. I just want our Afro-American men, not Afro, our African-American men to live. Because you don't, you don't fear nothing. You're not afraid of the cops. So you want to talk shit to the cop. Now, I'm not a cop guy. I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm not a cop guy. You know, my brother got murdered by the police. My brother got murdered. The cops shot my brother seven times in 1995 in Jersey City, New Jersey, in a stolen car. They just killed my brother. But what Really? I'm, yeah. Straight, uh, my brother's name is Darren wow. Kirkland. My oldest brother. So, okay. How, how, how did you feel when you heard that news? Well, I was in college, and I'm, I'm, I'm just a different kind of man. I, I'm immune to a lot of things because I dealt with death as a youngster, real young. And nobody knows this, but my whole family is gone. Like, I have no mother, no dad, both my brother. Everybody's deceased in my family. So nobody lived, no one lived to be 60 in my family. Wow. Like, my dad died when he was 30. My, my brother died when he was 30. My youngest brother died when he was 40. My mom died when she was in her 50s. So no one lived a long time. So I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not immune to death, but it doesn't affect me the way most people. I just take what I have and just keep pushing. And if I could save somebody's life on choices, this is what I try to do. And I know when the things that we talk about, is always going to be someone that'll find something wrong with what you said instead of, reacting and listen to the valuable information that we give in that could save your life. That's all. This is all this program. Is about. It's not for you to make choices. Take the time, take the emotion out of something that you just heard that you may not like. Because people find something to argue about on the smallest shit. The smallest fucking thing. Like, I want to paint this yellow. And they're like, ah! They want to argue over the dumbest shit. It, and here's my thing. If you don't have a high school education, you shouldn't be on Vlad commenting. If you ain't got common sense, you shouldn't be on Vlad trying to have an opinion. If someone's told you before that you're kind of weird or your way of thinking is fucked up, do not come on Vlad trying to have a comment or on the TK Kirkland podcast or any platform because you didn't get the proper education to express yourself. So anything that comes across, you want to fucking have an argument about. You got to grow the fuck up and pick and choose your battle. Some shit just ain't worth talking about. And a lot of you men got a female trait. You act like hoes. <laughs> no, nah, these motherfuckers really act like hoes. They want to comment on everything. They want to express it. That's, females do that shit. You motherfuckers, I don't know what has happened to this generation of men in the last 30 years, this sensitivity, and you think someone hating on you because they told, they telling the truth. You got to grow the fuck up and be a man. Bottom fucking line. Period. I'm going to get mad at these motherfuckers right now, Vlad. <laughs> well, uh, you know, speaking of, of people getting killed, unfortunately, um, Crunchy Black from 3-6 Mafia who was a recent guest on my show. Yes. And we, had a, we had a hell of an interview. Uh, his daughter was I recently that. fatally shot outside her hotel room. Yes. Um, we, we broke the story. Uh, one of his uh, other kids reached out to me, and then I hit up DJ Paul um, to confirm it. Yes. And it, and it was, unfortunately, very true. She was, I think, 27 years That's, old. That hurts, man. Because as a parent, let me tell you something. Being a parent... Is one of the hardest things you could ever do in your life because your mind never shuts off. It's 24-7, 365 days a year, you are concerned about your children, where they are, who they talking to, who they driving with. And sometimes my daughter will say, Dad, I'm like, baby, my job is to be responsible for your life. It's on my watch. So some things I can't, I can't just let you do just because. And it's not, it wasn't like when we was growing up, lad. 
Because out of all these things that we talk about, like from Brianna, George Floyd, Shad Knight, the presidency, you know what no one, the news never talked about th this last week? The sex trafficking situation that happened in Atlanta where they found the 39 kids in the fucking yeah. truck. That should have yeah, been ho horrible, major news. Horrible. Yeah, horrible. See, we, there's we so many. On, yeah, we, we, we reported on it. Vlad TV does You did? Good, good. Yeah. There, absolutely. See, there's so many stories, right? That we're forgetting about certain things. That sex trafficking shit got to fucking stop, ladies and gentlemen. And we're always looking towards the men. But, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, you parents, sometimes you got to look at females who befriend you because these friend, these females are connected to a guy or connected to people who do the sex trafficking. So you respect them and trust them because you they, they quote unquote supposed to be nice. But the next thing you know, you're in a situation and you'll never be seen again. Look at um my man's girl who got picked up, the guy that committed suicide. Epstein. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, his girlfriend. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, a beautiful girl. You ever, did you see the documentary on Epstein? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and all the money that these motherfuckers have, they want to wind up doing the dumbest shit. You want to fucking mess with innocent children to give them $200 when you're a fucking billionaire. You can have almost anybody you want. But you choose to fuck up somebody's life. This is what the fuck you do. You want to fuck up somebody's life. And to all you motherfuckers out there that be doing dumb shit, you want to fuck up somebody's life. You'd rather rob a person. You know? Instead of robbing a person, rob a corporation. You motherfuckers don't understand it. Don't rob a person. You're going to rob somebody. Rob a corporation. They can write the shit off. <laughs> I saw a video. A man walked in and uh, had a gun and robbed this guy, his girl, and the baby on the elevator. I saw that. Yeah, That's the man. What the fuck? You're done. With no mask on, we see who the fuck you are. Camera's right there. Camera's right the fuck there. Your friend pulled out a gun. Everybody going away. Because they're going to find you. Over a watch and a few dollars. Yeah. This is the dumbest shit in the world. And I just hope that people, like again, I'm going to keep reading right about this your show, Vlad. They got to learn. I hope this reaches, the, out of all the people that watch your, your shows and my fans who watch me on here, I hope that you are listening to what we are telling you. Make good choices. Well, to, to talk about a few positive things before good. we let you go, uh, Mike Epps recently posted up uh, some photos because he grew up in Indiana. Yes. And he showed pictures uh, of this crack house that he used to basically hustle out of. Right. And his friends used to hustle out of there. People have gotten arrested, killed, and so forth. And he actually rehabbed this whole property. Awesome. And now and now it's like a beautiful, you know, an actual like commercially viable rehab property. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Like, like yeah. I'll show you. I know I'm not, I'm I'm known Mike for a long time and I it's good to see he's doing great things. Yep. That's, a, that's an awesome feel. To all the comedians that are out there doing things, keep doing great things. Keep working on your craft. It's just, it's just a beautiful thing. That's oh, what it man, looks like the beautiful. before and after. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, it looks real good. Yeah. Shout out to Mike Epps. And you Shout know, out to report, Mike Epps. We just reported on another story where a group of 19 black families got together to buy over 90 acres of land in Georgia as a safe city for black people. I saw that. Now, what now what do they want to do? They they put the money together. How much did the property cost? Blah, no, blah, no. blah. Then, 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 okay. So they're no, just no. going to make it a city. I guess. And, you know, it, it's one of those things where I'm happy for it happening. But at the end of the day, although you say this is your city, a white police officer could roll up in there and go into any house he wants. Damn right. It's not your own country. Right. You it's know, so like true. the one thing, the one thing I found interesting, like for example, Akon, he's building Akon City in Senegal. Yes. Uh, the government gave him three square miles and it's a six billion dollar project. Yes. And it's its own city and it has its own police force. Yes. 
Now, how many miles is it? Three square miles. Okay, okay, okay. I'll take it. Not not unbelievably massive, but, right. but big. Yes. But big. You know, and he saw like, well, you know, Kanye is trying to do the same kind of thing, you know, in, in Wyoming. But I'm like, yeah, but Kanye can't open up his own police station in Wyoming. Damn sure that can't. Have, Hell you know, no. Hell no. Hell no. Yeah, he can't do that. But, you know, in Senegal, he actually has his own police force. That's awesome. Like, it's good to yeah. see people doing some great things. Hey, shout out to Akon. Shout out to Mike Epps. Shout out to just people who just want to do right out here. Because like yep. I said, you got to cherish life. Um, life is long. I tell people, don't say life is too short. Change that. Because you put that shit in the universe, that shit still shorten your time yeah. on this motherfucker. Life is yep. long. Yep. Life is yep. long. Uh you know, since last time there was the whole uh, entanglement situation <laughs> with uh, with Jada Pinkett yes. and August Alsina and then Will yes. Smith. Now, you know, the Will Smith crying face is now the new crying. Right, movie, right. You know, instead of Jordan. When you saw that whole thing come come together in a park, you know, because you'd always heard, you know, I remember at one point me and August Alsina started to kind of go back and forth on Twitter. And I said, well, what about the Jada Pinkett shit? And then he just stopped answering at that yes. point. And then he came forward. And it was revealed that he was sleeping with Jada and he claimed that Will Smith was okay with it. And I believe him. You believe him? I think a man, when pussy's on the table again and is emotional, you're not going to lie on another man. And I tell people, watch. If you ever watch that video, ladies and gentlemen, YouTube lad, cut the sound down. <laughs> <laughs> cut the sound off and watch him. And you'll see who's lying and who's telling the truth. And I can tell you this, Will Smith was hurt. I take my hat off to him because he controlled his pain extremely well. See, because what people fail to realize, if it was the other way around, the world would have came down on Will Smith hard. And... Uh, what you mean Will Smith having an entanglement and doing X, Y, and Z, good as Jada Pinkett is. And she gave him, did this, blah, blah, blah. But since it was her doing it, you really didn't hear too much about it. It was just like, oh, it was an entanglement. It, it happened, blah, blah, blah. Right, because think about it. August Alsina came around because he was friends with Jaden Smith, his yes. son. Yes, And... Jada Pinkett started sleeping with her son's friend. Yes. Now, let's just twirl it around a little bit. Oh, my God. Willow Smith brings by her female friend to the house. Yes. And Will Smith starts fucking her. Yep. Will would have to go on an apology tour like Nick Cannon. Man, no. That Will Smith would be <laughs> locked up like Bill Cosby and Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> it would go a whole nother route. Right. Because, you know, me and Dale Hughley, we talked about that. And... You know, people want to, you know, women are like, yeah, you know, yeah, go girl, go get your entanglement. Right. But if you really look at this situation, right, you have this much older, wealthy woman and you have this much younger man. Yes. Whose, whose health is messed up. He's yes. going through serious health. He's in and out of the hospital. Right. He's he's taking care of his younger brothers and sisters because the, like the, the mother can't take care of him. So he's financially like, you know, strapped to take care of everything in this, this woman who he's admired for years, comes in Man. and entangles him up. Yep. You know, and she's from Baltimore, really... so she know how to fuck. <laughs> right. That's a whole nother story. Though. Go ahead. <laughs> That's a whole other story. <laughs> you know, if you really look at, for example, the Harvey Weinstein situation, where you have this rich, powerful, older man who's using his pull and his power to, to have sex with these vulnerable women, and he's now in prison for it, but Jada Pinkett is doing something kind of similar, if you think about it. Right. I mean, am, am I right or am right, I wrong? You're absolutely right. But it would take August to press charges against her. Mm. Morally is wrong. But you have to press charges and say, I, she violated, she took advantage of me. You understand? You know, but it's, it's, it's just a bad situation altogether. But they have a unique relationship. I, again, I tell everybody... Take your hat up to Will, because if Will wasn't Will, he'd have smacked the ass clear across the room. And I'm just keeping it real. I don't believe in violence. I don't believe in hitting nobody. But 
she have got smacked across the motherfucking room. Well, and let me tell you something. I have been hearing Will and Jada stories for, for, for years. over a decade. But for longer decade. than that. And, and, and I'm not going to even say yes. what it is because right. they're going to sue me. Yes. But let me tell you, this story here is nothing compared to what I've Right. Heard. I've heard the same. I totally agree. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it off camera. Everyone always DMs me like, "What'd yeah. you hear?" I ain't gonna tell you. <laughs> Fuck all that. Uh-huh. You're not gonna, you're not gonna screen capture my shit and put me out there. Exactly. I've had that way too, way too many times. Yeah. But yeah, this right here, I felt like knowing what I know and seeing what I saw. Will said, "Ah, this ain't shit." Right. Right. We, 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 you know, like we've had this open marriage thing for so long, and and if it works for have, them. Good. If it works for them. If it works for them, it works for them. If it works for them, good. Last question. Yes, sir. Last time you were here, we talked about the Eric Von Zip situation. Yes, yes, yes. Right. And you who are very good friends and roommates with with Eric Von Zip, rest in peace. Yes. We talked about how you know that he got a large amount of money from Puffy. Yes. That allegedly was supposed to be a payoff yes. for the murder for the murder of Tupac. Yes. But he ended up spending that money himself. He like bought like a nightclub with it or something yes. like that. Well, the story that has circulated was that after Tupac got killed, Puffy allegedly gave the money I heard. to Z- to Zip. Yes. And Zip was supposed to give the money to to Keefe in there. Yes. But he never gave the money to but him. But thank God he never gave him the money, right? Think about it. If he gave the money, Puffy will be in prison now, money for hire, a murder for hire. So thank God. If, if, if this is a true story. I, I'm not saying yes or no. But if he would have gave him them the money, it would have been a murder for hire and Puffy would be locked up. Was there any sort of pushback after the interview came out? No, nope, not at all. <laughs> Nobody talks to me. Not at all. You know, I'm 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 just so glad I'm well respected. I'm just one of those guys who are well respected, and I carry myself well. I carry myself the way I want to be treated, and you can't lose when you're like that. I take pride in being the kind of man that I've become. When I was young, I was finding myself doing a lot of different crazy things in the world, but as I became a man. I, I I stand firm on the ground that's underneath my feet, and I truly take pride in how I move through this earth. But did you hear anything though? No, no. And honestly, when I started putting out some of this information out there, I, I was a little bit nervous in the beginning because you know Puffy's a powerful yes, rich yes, individual. Yes. He's, he's way way richer than me. Yes. Like, <laughs> I don't want to get into a legal battle. Right, but, right. Uh, I, I'll, I'll probably just fold and just take the shit. Right, down. right, I'm, right. I'm not. I'm not trying to spend a million dollars going back and forth. Yes. Uh, but when I first started coming out, I was, you know, and I was interviewing like the cop who who investigated it, and I interviewed Keefe D, who right. claimed firsthand knowledge of the whole thing. Yes. The guy in the car that, that shot up Tupac's car and, yes. and everything. And I put it out there and I sort of waited to see what was gonna happen. Yes. And, and nothing happened. So either what we're saying is true or Puffy just doesn't care. Well, he doesn't knows, care. Okay. And then you well respect it. You know, like I said, keep me and them know the kind of man that I am. I'm the quiet guy, but you can be touched if I really want to live that life. I'm that kind of man. I just want to be this guy, um, Vlad, who just had a great life, who can swim, who can go on his scooter, he could ride his bike, he could take care of his children and go on stage and tell Joe, I don't want no problems. I told you I'm 60, right? What they say, these are my twilight years. I want people to know that I have enjoyed this life and gonna continue enjoying it. And I'm not gonna get caught up in the BS. And like I said earlier, I want everyone's goal in life is to shoot for peace, of mind. Make good choices. Keep your dick in your pants. Ladies, keep your legs closed. Because half your problems come when you start fucking around, when you start dating in life. You take that relationship shit the fuck out and focus on your money and focus on what you want to obtain in life. The rest is easy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I think 50 Cent said it like, when you got money, you don't have to chase women anymore. 
You don't. The roles get reversed. Yep. You know, like being a, a successful man walking into a room is like being a beautiful woman walking into that same room. Yep, it's so true. You know, everyone will look at you. Everyone will look at you. You, you, are, you are the center of attention. Uh, when you meet somebody and they already know your reputation before you even open your mouth. It's awesome. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a different dynamic. Yes, it is. And to, to all the, all the fellas out there who, who are going through women problems, who, who are, you know, having girls cheat on them, who are mm -hmm. chasing after women, who are stressing out, girls ain't calling them back. And I used to be that guy. Right. Like I, I'm not, I'm not speaking to some fly dude that's been like a player his whole life. Nah, nah. I yeah. was that struggling dude i was a computer programmer yeah. i was completely there was no dj vlad for decades to come yeah and i i i got into some stressful situations with women yeah once i became successful all that just went away yeah just goes away it goes away because and a lot of it is, is the confidence yes i agree i agree it's just it's it's within you you yeah. just become more confident in who you are where you could just go and approach anyone you feel like right. approaching and and, and there is nothing more alluring to a woman than confidence. Yep. It goes to for your basketball players, your baseball players, all that. It might be corny as hell growing up. But once you achieve that, your confidence go out the roof. But one more thing before we go. If you're an athlete or striving for anything, my advice is to you is to stay single. Mm. Enjoy life as much as you can before you try to settle down. I had a football player call me. Watch the story. Professional football player. The TK Kirkham podcast is the, the jewel dropper when it comes to shows. Him and the girl is on the phone with me. He's asking me about TK. Um, my girl is tripping because my friend that I talked to on the phone, who's my friend, and I said, how old are you? He says, I'm 25. I said, how old is she, she's a 22. I said, both of y'all need to go out and just start fucking different people. You're too young to be in a relationship anyway, to be calling me at two o'clock in the morning because y'all don't trust each other. What the fuck is wrong with you? I tell the wise on the phone, I say, you're a professional football player. Why are you dealing with this? Because you, you're successful and you got some young girl that think her life has changed because she's dating this NFL player. And she's not even going to be with you in eight, nine years. Because the saddest thing is Emmett motherfucking Smith. How he woke up one day and the lady ain't want him no more. Yeah. See, I know you met, you know, your relationship, people got their thing. I'm afraid to give my life in somebody else's hand. And we do 20 years. And one day the girl wakes up and says, I don't want to be with you no more. <laughs> wow. Yeah, his wife is beautiful. Yeah, but that's the thing. That's what I want to say. I want men and women to get past beauty and get past titles and start judging people for the character. Because you know what's the worst things in this world? People listen to the person that got the most money. Instead of listening at True. the person with the wisdom and the character. The person with the most money probably got lucky and did a lot of scandal the shit to get there. Don't make him a good person. Agree? Yeah. Does not make you a good person. So we got to change this and stop thinking that the person with the most money is the smartest. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about athletes and drama, I just interviewed Andre Risen. Ooh, one of, used to be one of my good friends. Yeah, and at one point, he had the record for the biggest NFL contract for a wide receiver of all time. He got $18 million Wow. Point. He was living with Left Eye from TLC. Yep. And everyone knows that she burned down his house, Yes. right? Yep. What everyone doesn't know is that this was the second time she lit his house on fire. No, the first time she she lit his bathroom on fire and they managed to put it out. Right. And even after she burned down his multi-million dollar mansion in Atlanta, he still stayed with her. Insane. If you think, now I can imagine if you work at UPS and you're dating Left Eye from TLC and look, you're saying, look, 
I got to stay with this person because there's no other way I'm going to get someone of this caliber. Right. Because I pick up boxes for a living. Yes. But when you're Andre Risen. And he could have anybody. You could have anybody. Yes. You are, you are, you know, and we talked about this, how it's a very interesting situation when you walk into a club and someone could actually Google your, your salary. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it's very weird. You can't Google my salary. Right. You know, but you could, you could Google his salary. Yes. And we talked about it and I said, why would you stay with her after burning down your house the first time, yes. much less the second time? He goes, well, I just felt like I could help her and we were kindred spirits and everything else like that. So after she lit the bathroom on fire, you didn't think, you know, maybe this is not going to work out? I never thought that though, Vlad. I was in, I was, I had already accepted that I'm going to help this lady. Mm. Man, I had so many bad motherfuckers women and rich women and lawyers, doctors. I'm Andre Rodden, dog. I'm balling. I'm balling. I'm still balling right now with a beautiful wife. But I'm just saying, I could have went so many different avenues, man. My my nine to five, I'm my golf tournament, my fundraiser. I'm a National Football League player. So it's like, Man, I, I was on some other shit. So it's like, okay, I, I already accepted. Like, I got to help this lady. I got to help this young lady. Because there's something evidently else going on. Uh, you know what ultimately happened in that situation? She ended up moving in with Suge. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, true story. I never knew that part. After, after all that, after all the drama and... and the rests and the violence and the the fires and the everything and she tattooed love and hate on her arms because she was mad at him and right and everything she was fucking shook at the end isn't that something guys let that be a story to you when you start having problems move the fuck on yeah it's not worth it it's not worth it if she burns down your house it's probably the wake up call that this is not the one. Or if they ever, if they, and I was taught this too, and if they ever call the police on you, you gotta go. If a woman ever calls the police on you, you gotta go. That's why I work hard, get your credit right, stack your money, and have your own place so you don't have to depend on anybody. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the great Vlad for life. T.K. Kirkland. Yes, sir. Check out the podcast, the T.K. Kirkland podcast. Go to my Instagram, T.K. underscore Kirkland. That way you see all the new shows that's coming up because we've got the pandemic. So by the time it's come on, we don't know shows will be canceled or back on. But if you, on my Instagram, my posts when I'm working at almost every other day. I salute you, Vlad. You know, as always, may your pain be champagne. You keep doing your thing. That's what it is. T to the motherfucking K. Until my man next for time. life. Peace. Peace.